nine minutes before six o'clock now and I am really excited. We are just hours away from the expected Atlantis shuttle launch, the final launch of the shuttle fleet. And joining us live this morning to talk about the historic occasion is retired NASA astronaut Charles Hobal. And sir, I first want to say thank you for your service to our country. I know you were in the Marine Corps as well as serving in NASA and it is wonderful to have you here. Please tell us where you are this morning for our viewers to know. Uh, well, just sitting out in front of the, uh, the main press site, right in front of the big clock that's kind of been known as a kind of a hallmark to the launches and some of the scenes. Um, we're still a little over five hours away from uh, hopefully a, a, a little bit of clearing in the weather and a successful launch of Space Shuttle Atlantis. Please tell us what it's like for you. Is this a bittersweet day? Uh, yes, it definitely is. Um, you know, we uh, we've we've had. Uh, 30 plus years of success with the, the space shuttle doing uh, a myriad of different missions. Uh, the, the thing that's unique about the space shuttle that's uh, not common in other spacecraft is of course the reusability, uh, but also the capability to bring uh, large payloads back to Earth for whether it's uh, experiments for analysis or looking at hardware or bringing something back that, uh, that's coveted from space. Um, we have had uh, tens of thousands of people that have uh, that have touched the program and in one way or another worked it, uh, poured their hearts and souls into it to make it as successful it is, as it is. And uh, it's it's going to be a, a sad thing to see a lot of them uh, have to walk away from a program that that they've uh, really enjoyed and, and, and do not out of out of uh, getting a paycheck, but just out of pride for their job. Having flown shuttle missions yourself, what do you think is the greatest accomplishment of this 30-year program? Well, I, I think uh, the, the thing that probably stands out the most right now, probably because of recency, is, is just the uh, continued build and, de uh, and development and design of the International Space Station to get it on orbit. Uh, jointly with the, uh, the Russians, the Europeans, Japan, and Canada, we have close to a million pounds on orbit, and it's uh, an incredible orbiting science laboratory uh, that we use as a, uh, a stepping stone to develop a lot of our technologies that we hope to use someday uh, to go on to further space flight, but also uh, to support life down here on Earth and make it better. What do you think should be the next priority for NASA? Well, uh, definitely the direction we want to head is, is to uh, use what we've learned to go on to interplanetary travel. So Mars has been our ultimate destination for quite some time. Uh, we just haven't been able to get on a, a, a successful path to get there just due to uh, not having enough money and direction. Uh, I think I think now that we uh, pull back on the space shuttle a little bit, maybe we can start getting our focus there, and that's the path we're on right now. All right, quickly, I know you've retired from NASA, but you have Ohio ties. You went to high school in Ohio, is that correct? This Northridgeville, Ohio. Anybody you want to say hello to <laughs> this morning? Uh, just all, just all my people there. It was. Uh, I've been to a couple reunions. I've been away from Ohio uh, a fair amount, but there's a large contingent of the astronaut corps that have come from Ohio. So I guess I'm uh, kind of an honorary member by having gone to high school there. Well, and we're very proud of that, Charles Hobart. Thank you so much for joining us live this morning on such an historic day. Thank you, and have a great morning. You too.